My precious Savior suffered Oh, yeah. 
afternoon school today is Joshua the sixth chapter, commencing at verse 20, and, and ends at verse number 21. Joshua chapter 6 begins at verse 20 and ends at verse number 21. And it reads When the trumpet sound sounded, the army shouted at sound of the trumpet. When the men gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed. So everyone charged straight in, and they took the city. They devoted the city to the Lord and destroyed with the sword every living thing in it, men and women, young and old, cattle, sheep, and donkeys. Amen. Amen. Let's bow our head for a word of prayer. Dear God in heaven, we come before the throne again, thanking you for the blessings that you have showered upon us. Father, sometimes we don't take for granted, we take for granted of those blessings that you give us, and we uh, reluctantly show proper gratitude uh, for what you've done for us, and we know that sometimes our conduct is less becoming of a Christian and more becoming of calm, thinking people of this world. We ask that you create in us a new heart, help us to be better individuals, help us to be better Christians, Help us to love each other perfectly and sincerely. Help us to show appreciation for those things that are done uh, for us. Thank you. Thank help us to appreciate uh, uh, the preacher that we have here that labors hard and his wife that supports him in, as he serves here in spirit and in truth. Amen. Thank you for the elders. Thank you for the members that are faithfully dedicated to this work here. Thank, thank you for those that we remember this day for those contributions that they've done and passed on and gone before us. Thank you, Father, for loving this church and keeping it open and uh, vibrant and uh, loving each other as much as possible that lies within us. We know that we are not perfect church, but we know that perfection is in obedience to your word, Father. We thank you for uh, this opportunity to meet again this afternoon and to worship you in spirit and in truth. May our worship be acceptable in our sight and may the things that we do from henceforth be acceptable in our sight. Yes. We ask that you bless us and keep us in your son most holy and marvelous name we pray and give thanks. Amen. 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 397 in Brooklyn. 397 in Brooklyn.
Thank our dear brother Leon for doing a good job of reading it. Let me reread it once again for my sake. Um, out of the New International Version, the NIV Version. Uh, when you have it, somebody say, Amen. 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 Right. Joshua chapter 6, starting with verse 20 and 21 says, When the trumpet sounded, the army shouted, and at the sound of the trumpet, when the men gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed. So everyone charged straight in, and they took the city. Verse 21 says, our clue verse, they devoted the city to the Lord and destroyed it, they destroyed it with the sword, that is, every living thing in it, men and women, young and old, cattle, sheep, and donkeys. So again, that's Joshua chapter 6, verse 20 and 21, out of the NIV. I want to continue this afternoon with our Bible character series as we're trying to March from Genesis to Revelation and extract the lives of various Bible characters and see what we can take from their lives and make us a godly person. Is that fair, folks? Amen. So again, we're talking about Joshua, and this time our focus is going to be the Battle of Jericho. Now, moving on with Joshua's story, the battle for the city of Jericho is one of the most inspiring faith-building stories in the Bible. And we're talking out of Joshua chapter number 6. The Bible says that Jericho was a very secure city beyond its massive walls. So it had to be very impressive as if it was not able to be defeatable. But obviously we know that whatever man makes, it is defeatable. When God's in the picture, right? Amen. So whatever man makes, yes, we can make some great things. We can make some great skyscrapers, things of that nature. But anytime God wants to knock it down, he can do it. Amen. And he can do it without dynamite. Amen. He can do it by himself because he is that powerful. But nonetheless, what you find with God is that God has a plan for everything. And of course, you already know the plan revealed unto these folks and uh, the children of Israel's day as they were wandering through Canaan land and finally trying to get to the point where they can settle and capitalize on the promise of God, we find out that they didn't, didn't get there without some type of trouble in the way. Is that all right, John? You see, even though God may give you a promise, he didn't say it's going to be an easy road to get there. And so they had to fight their way, if you will, all the way unto the promised land of Canaan before settling down. But one thing that you know about God, though, is that God has a plan. You never serve a haphazard God. If you notice, God is always organized. God always has things planned ahead. And he also can see the end at the beginning. And so all we're doing is actually players in that game. Can I call it that? We are those that are following God's script as Joshua and the children of Israel were also following the script. And the good thing about the script is that God already wrote the ending. Amen. All we have to do is trust that we'll get to the ending, that he has already destined for all of us. You know, putting ourselves in an applicable situation as, Je as Je uh, Joshua did when it came to the walls of Jericho. Let's look at that for a minute. Look at Joshua chapter 6, verse 2 to verse number 5. Let's back up in the chapter a little bit before what we just read as our opening scripture. Look what it says in Joshua chapter 6, verse 2 to verse number 5. Now this is God motivating, instructing, and building up his leader Joshua to continue the charge within the Canaan land. Look what the Bible says. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands. Now look at this now. The battle has not even begun yet. And God is already talking in the past tense. Did you catch that? He didn't say, I will deliver Jericho. Because when God says, I'm going to do something, it's already done. There's nothing that can stop it. So look at that. Then it said, Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with his king and its fighting men. In other words, they're not going to be able to fight against you. They're not going to be able to handle you, in other words. Look what he says, though, now. When God has a plan, we also have a responsibility to uphold our part. Because right. notice what he said to Joshua and to those following Joshua. Look at what he said. He said, 
march around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Now, don't you say do it as long as you want. Do it until you're tired. Do it until you fulfill. Remember, when God has a plan, it's a specific plan, and it has steps that you specifically have to do in order to inherit the promise that he has given. All right, so let's look at this now. God was still detailed, right? Mm -hmm. Joshua chapter 2, verse number, I mean, chapter, chapter, chapter 6, verse number 4 says, have seven priests, not three, four. He said, how many? No. This guy is specific, right? Mm -hmm. He said, have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horn in front of the ark on the seventh day. You see how that changed? Mm -hmm. the, the instruction changes. Now, you got to up your game a little bit on the seventh day. He's, he's basically saying, he said, on the seventh day, march around the city how many times? Seven, seven times. With the priest blowing the trumpets. All right? You see that there? Let's look at the next verse there. Verse 5. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have what? The whole army give a loud shout. You see, sometimes you need some help with some things, right? You got to have some teamwork, right? This is the same thing as what? The church working together. All right. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout. When you do all this, notice, the promise don't take effect until you do your part. Right. Huh? Now, then the wall of the city will what? Collapse, and the army will go up everyone straight in. So you notice the pattern. Promise, faith, obedience, victory. Hmm? You see what, how God does things? This is the pattern you're going to see with God from Genesis to Revelation. And when we do our part, the blessing and the promise comes to life within our own lifetime. Is that all right now? Now notice now, going back to the, the, the plan God gave in Joshua chapter 6, verse 2 to verse number 5, out of NIV version, to summarize it up, God was saying that he would provide a miracle for them to enter the highly secure walls surrounding the city of Jericho. Notice God did not provide a battering ram. He did not advise them to climb over the walls. He also did not advise them to use fire or anything else. All God was asking them to do was to have the faith and obedience to the things he commanded, and he would open up the city so their soldiers could take it. Now notice again, they, look at the pattern. They had to follow orders to get the blessing just like we have to do today. They had to march around the city one time for six days, right? The priests would have to march with them with ram's horns in their hands as well. But on the seventh day, God changed the plan by having the children of Israel march around the walls of the city seven times while their priests blew the horns. You see, on that seventh day, God will cause a miracle to collapse the walls so the children of Israel's soldiers could go in and conquer Jericho. And of course, the victory is in this. The people obeyed the plan of God for the conquest of Jericho, as you see in Joshua chapter 6, verse 6 to 27. And God, as he promised, you know God can't fail, right? You see that the walls came what? They came tumbling down, just like God had promised. So what we learned from this short story, this short inspirational message this afternoon? First, you realize that God never lies. He is not capable of lying. You know what the scriptures say, that God is light. In him, there is no darkness at all. And it also testifies to the same fact that God cannot lie. It's not a part of his character. It's not a possibility, period, that he can lie. So with that being said, you can put some trust in these statements. You, he is completely trustworthy. He is perfection. He is faithful, which means he is reliable. You see, if he makes a promise, he will always come through. You see, this, this promise of conquering Jericho was no exception. The children of Israel marched into the city and conquered it. They took the spoils of war, which means they took the silver, the gold, and all metal things for the Lord's treasury as God commanded. So always remember the following things about the word of God in your own life. God describes it as a sword, which means it is your offense and defense in this life against Satan's schemes formed against you, Ephesians 6, verse 17. It is described 
as a light unto your path and a lamp unto your feet, showing you the way in all of your tasks in this life. Psalm 119, verse 105. And it is called the word of life because it is eternal salvation unto the soul. Philippians 2, verse number 16. So your question or your, 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 your challenge of the hour is basically this, a very simple message. Will you put your trust in the word of God here today? Hmm? You see, I don't know what your wall of Jericho is going to be, but it's going to be something. There's going to be something standing in your way until you meet your death. Amen, somebody. Your wall of Jericho might be financial. Your wall of Jericho may be hell. Your wall of Jericho may be in your family. Your wall of Jericho could be coming from strangers from nowhere. But one thing you know, when you look at it as a human, you look at it like the wall of Jericho. Can't nobody get through that. It's too much. It's impenetrable. We can't handle that. Well, you know what? We can't handle it. But when we trust in God, can you make a wall tumble by itself? Amen. What I mean by we can't handle it, we can't handle it by ourselves. Amen. You have to have the power of God in your life to knock these walls down, and you will go in and you will conquer Amen. all the same. Man. Remember one thing that you always realize about the children of Israel. When God was humbling them in the Old Testament, he didn't pick the biggest tribe. Hmm? He didn't pick the most military and strong tribe in the earth. He just picked somebody he wanted to be a peculiar people. You know, when I look at it this way, God sometimes got to show you your weakness in order for you to see his strength. Because if you think about it, if he would have picked the strongest army, maybe like Egypt at the time, the Egyptians would have had no reason to say God did this. They would have said, oh, my Pharaoh is so smart. They would have said, my gold reserves are what done it for me. They would have said, they're false gods, Ra and Osiris and all that kind of nonsense would have delivered them. They would have said, my mighty chariots were my power. But God, if I can use this term, I'm exaggerating a little bit. He took a ragtag group of folks <laughs> hmm? and made an, a mighty army out of them. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. To conquer foes they would have never been able to conquer by themselves. So that is your question. I don't know what you're going to run up against here today. But you ought to be saying to yourself, remember the formula. What's the formula? Promise of God, right? Faith, meaning trust in that promise, right? right? Walk with him. Remember, they had to walk the, walk the, walk the yard, if you want to call it, right? Mm -hmm. They had to go around Jericho in obedience, right? right? And then what happened? Through their faith, through their obedience, the wall fell down and they walked in there conquering victorious. Amen. That's going to be you this week if you keep your trust in God. Is that all right, y'all? These are the promises of God. If you're a child of God, of course, we'll transition on. <laughs> and you walk disorderly unto God. You already know you can't have the wall of Jericho by yourself anyway. It's time to get reconnected to the power. In other words, we know what to do. Acts 8, verse 22, 1 John 1, 7, verse number 10. If you're a Christian that has fallen short, God says what? Repent. Change. Confess your fault to God, meaning come clean. And ask to forgive you. He's going to do just that. He's going to walk with you once again. And you'll see some of the walls fall down in your life. But if you're not a child of God, you got to get in the army. You can't be walking behind us and talking about, I'm going to make the promises too. No, you got to walk with Amen. God's people. Amen. And how do you do that? You have to obey the plan of salvation. Mm -hmm. That is, the Bible says in Romans 10, verse 17, faith comes by here. And here by what church? Help me out. The word, the word of God. That's the first stage of the plan of salvation. You got to know something about Jesus. You got to know that he suffered, died, and rose again. That you may have a chance at eternal life. You gotta realize about yourself how powerless you are to save yourself. When you see Romans 3 23 and Romans 6 verse 23, that makes it absolutely clear that we cannot save ourselves. The Bible says, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The Bible says, The wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through who? Christ Jesus. Only through Christ Jesus. So you have to believe that's the second part of the plan of salvation. That Jesus Christ is the Son of God, which makes him also your Lord 
and your sin. You'll see that in John chapter 3, verse number 16. But you also have to repent of your sin. That's the obedient side of things. In other words, you can't expect the blessing of God like the children of Israel could not expect the blessing of God if they had sat down there and said, wall, fall down. They had to what? March around it and follow all the commandments of God in order to become victorious. Now, we're not victorious over sin and eternal death unless we also repent. That's basically what Jesus was saying in Luke chapter 13, verse 3, verse 5, about salvation of all men. He said, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. And of course, you have to confess Jesus as the Son of all mighty God. And of course, you said Matthew chapter 10, verse 32, Romans 10, verse 9, and verse number 10. Now, the past scriptures show us that with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10, verse 9, and verse 10 shows us that. And what are you confessing? Acts 8, verse 37. Where the Ethiopian eunuch uses an example for us before he was saved. He said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And you must go down into the watery grave of baptism. That's part of the obedience part once again. Where Jesus said simply in Mark 16, verse number 16. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. So when you come out of that watery grave of baptism, you come up with a new status with God. You're no longer an alienated sinner. Now you're a saint. Now you're a child of God. You're no longer separated from God, but you're now one with him. That means you're a part of his family. And you, of course, you are saved. And we just mentioned, because Jesus said once again, he that believes and is what? Baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And of course, after that, stay faithful to Jesus unto death. Revelation 2, verse 10, that means keep believing and obeying him to the end. And heaven's going to be your home. We're just going to sing a song of invitation to give you the opportunity to do that right now. As together we stand and sing the Lord's invitation. Won't you come as we sing? Softly and tenderly, Jesus is 